Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Varnish on an Nginx web server. Now, if you don't know what Varnish is, don't worry, I'll explain it along the way, but I wanna get right into the tutorial, so let's take a look. Okay, so the website that we're gonna be working with is at this IP address ending in 134, and it's just you know a basic uh, website that I got from GitHub and just configured it a little bit for myself. So I am going to log into the web server here via SSH uh, at the same IP address, and now we are on the web server. The first thing I'm gonna do is do a sudo apt install varnish. And this is gonna put Varnish on our server here. And once that's finished, we can issue two more commands. Uh, we're gonna just enable Varnish and start it up just to make sure it's running. So we'll do that with systemctl start Varnish and systemctl enable Varnish. Okay, so now that that is up and running, what we wanna do is basically take our website right now as it exists, it's running over port 80 and put it on another port. Okay, so this is kind of where um, uh, probably an explanation of Varnish is gonna come in handy, so let me do that right now. When your web page gets a new visitor, Bob, it has to perform a pretty extensive task. It goes like this. First, the server needs to figure out which bits of information are needed. Then, it has to find the particular bits then assemble them in just the right order until it finally can send the complete picture to Bob's computer. Your server needs to do this every time it has a new visitor, which causes it to move a bit slow. Especially if you're lucky enough to have several Bobs, Bobs that all want to visit you at the same time. This is where we enter the scene. Varnish sits between your server and Bob. Whenever Bob visits, Varnish stores a copy of the information that's been assembled. So the next time he visits the same spot, Varnish immediately sends him the copied information. Varnish saves the server from doing the work over and over again. All right guys, now that you have a better idea about what Varnish is, we're basically gonna take our website as it exists and move it to another port, port 8080, okay? And we're gonna run Varnish under port 80. So all our requests are going to come in through port 80. Varnish is going to take a look at it and see if it has cached already. And if it does, it's just going to go right back. It's not even going to touch the server, respond to the, the client, whoever requested it. But if at that point when uh, Varnish sees if it's cached and it's not cached, then that's when we're going to have to go to the web server, build the page, send it back to Varnish, send it back to the user. So let's go ahead and set that up here. And what we're going to do is, since we're working with Nginx, go into the etc Nginx directory. And in here, uh, we'll go to the sites available directory and we want to edit our configuration file. For me, it's just the default configuration file. And like I said, instead of port 80, let's have our website operate under port 8080. Okay, so uh, we can um, apply those changes with a system CTL reload Nginx. And um, you might you might have to do this, you might not have to, but uh, you might need to open up the port 8080 on your firewall. So you can do that with UFW allow 8080. And now if we go back to our web browser here, refresh the page, it's not gonna work because there's no web page being served over port 80. But if we, uh, what is it, post fix with colon 8080, then we will see our website load up as expected. So. What we have to do next is to configure Varnish to operate under port 80. By default, it operates under port, uh, what is it, 60 something, 6081, 6081. Um, but we're gonna change that to port 80 just so that this website can operate and nobody has to type in a port afterwards. So uh, what we first wanna do is edit the file called etc default varnish. And in here, we're looking for, um, well, let's just search for 6081 here. And there it is. So what we wanna do here is just change this port to 80. Okay. And we also want to edit the etc varnish uh, default vcl file. And the same type of thing in here, um, we're just making sure that in this case, our backend 
right? Our website, the website that we're looking at is going to be running on port 8080. So that's where that port comes from. So here we go, default backend uh, port 8080 on this host. Okay, so that looks good. Um, next, we want to copy um, the service file for Varnish, and that's going to look like something like this. So we're going to copy it from the lib directory into the systemd uh, system directory. And that's just simple as executing this. And now we want to edit that file that we just created. So we can do that with vim um, editing the varnish.service file. And in here, we're going to change port 6081 again to port 80. Okay, so this is the port that Varnish is operating on. Um, and I just want to make sure I did that right. Yes, we don't want that extra space, or we do want that extra space. Okay, um, that looks good, so we'll save that. And now let's um, do a net stat. And we want to see what our servers, what ports they're operating under, just to make sure everything looks good. So we have here Varnish running um this is the admin dashboard or the admin panel this is the actual web address so uh we probably i forgot we should probably do some some restart so pause for a second let's do a systemctl uh, reload and we'll restart varnish as well and we will restart nginx just for good measure and now let's look at the net stat again and we should see varnish running on port 80 here, and our Nginx server running on 8080. Okay, so um, if we go back to our, our Chrome web browser here, uh, we can still go to port 8080, right? And it works just as you expect, uh, but this is not what we want people to go to when they come to our website. We want them to go to port 80. So just type in our, you know, our domain name or our IP address, and if we do that without the port, we should still be able to go to that web page. And, and you see that happening here, right? It, there's no redirection or anything. We're just going to that web page. And the one thing I want to look at here is if we go to view developer, developer tools, um, and we look at the, well, let's refresh the page. And we're in the network tab here with all selected. And we just go to the the, the page itself, none of the assets or anything, um, we will see here that under the response header that we are seeing um, Varnish, uh, a cache hit, right? So we see that we're actually utilizing Varnish and it's being served to the client. And um, that's something that you won't see if we go to the colon port 8080 port, which is uh, the, the web server directly, Nginx in this case. So if we do that, and we go to the IP address directly, there is no, re there's no indication that there's caching or varnish on the response header that we get back from the server. So um, that's about it. Um, that's the basic implementation for creating, or not creating varnish, but uh, implementing varnish on your Nginx web server. If you have any questions about that, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. And definitely if you got some value out of this video, give it a thumbs up if you wanna see more from me. Um, along the same lines of caching on your web server or anything else, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to this channel. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.